Hey guys, Tiki71 here, and this is the aftermath, November 3rd, 2020, of digging up most of my tropicals and putting them to bed in the greenhouse and also in the foyer. I got a couple of plants in there. Uh, I thought I'd take you along and just kind of show you what all we've gotten done over the last couple of weeks. We have been busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest, so come along. So I managed to get most of my plants in here in my doubled up Harbor Freight greenhouse. It's a jungle in here. <laughs> you got to see all this. I had to repot my majesty palms because the clay pots they were in busted up. Uh, the roots got so big that uh, they just started busting on the pots. And so they needed some room to grow. I still have a, uh, about three new windmill palm seedlings that I need to pot up. I've got variegated ginger, cordelins. I actually divided, I had two foxtail ferns. I divided them up. Now I've got four and got them in here. Potted up some of the begonias uh, just for some color in the greenhouse and see if I can get them to make it through the winter. Even though we're now in the greenhouse for a couple of weeks, I've got plumerias that are continuing to bloom. If you give them what they need, they'll keep growing and blooming. Also brought in the Borneo Giant. This goldfish plant has not stopped growing and blooming since I got it uh, almost two years ago. When I first got it, it was like four little sprigs. And look at this thing now. These, you can actually uh, cut them and root them in soil, and you can grow more of them too. Got some yuccas as well. I've had these for almost three years now, these yuccas. I just uh, bring them in in the winter and take them back out in the summer. I need to start thinking about dividing those up. These petunias with the purple and the white are absolutely fragrant. I had one single plant of it and we were able to get those rooted. And so now I've got multiples here. This is my Regal Shield. It's the one with the beautiful color underneath it. I've divided this up. There was two of them, so I divided it. I've got one out here along with the upright elephant ear and then I've got uh, two of, or one of each in the foyer in the main house. Three plants. Hiding behind this other plumeria here is what I call my lacrosse la palm. <laughs> a couple of years ago I saw it at uh, Lowe's and it was absolutely huge. It's gotten even bigger since then. But I managed to get it home in a Buick lacrosse sedan. I got a picture of that I can show you here. But it has grown like crazy. And in the greenhouse, it has survived and continues to grow and grow, and it's getting pretty big. The majesties that you get in the store for 15, 20 bucks, you know, they're real small, but if you will protect them from the freezing temps, you can get big bases on it. I'm gonna show you how big they can get here in just a minute. I also got my Hawaiian hibiscus dug up and put into new pots, and they're continuing to bloom. The plumeria that you see here was a little bitty stick uh, one year ago this week. And uh, I'm a getting ready to do a video on exactly how I potted them up, uh, rooted them from uh, cuttings, and then got them to grow as much as they have and bloom as much as they have. I started off with four cuttings. Every single one of them have grown like crazy and given me great blooms this year. Would you look at that color? My goodness. I left my pink Vuganvillia out just a little bit too long, throwing a little bit of a fit, uh, but it is actually looking better than it did when I brought it in. I was down to not very many leaves at all. She's starting to put on new ones and, uh, and still blooming. I've got crotons on a rack on the north wall with that mylar on the uh, actual wall bouncing uh, light off from the uh, grow lights. I've also got uh, a couple of Adenidia palms. These are called Christmas palms here. I've got a uh, sable palmetto growing and a couple of uh, baby, let me get this out of the way here, a couple of baby windmills in the cups there. The crotons give you great color though uh, when you spread them throughout the garden. Did not want to lose them so I got them potted up and in here for the winter time. And you see this beautiful pink here. Boy, I tell you what, when the grow lights are on, it's absolutely amazing. These are Hawaiian tea plants, uh, cordelins, and 
I've got a different color that I'm getting ready to show you here. These are called uh, Har let's see, Cordelin Fructosa Harlequin is the name of this color. It's got a beautiful rainbow color to the leaves. Love this plant. Bought them on eBay. They came in a wet newspaper or wrapped up in newspaper, wet paper towels and a Ziploc bag and we rooted them, uh, got them going. And very, very nice color there. I've got more Hawaiian tea plants here. Uh, the more shade that they get, the pinker they will get. These were, these had a whole lot more sunlight uh, during the spring and summer. And so they didn't uh, get that burst of pink like the others will. However, through the winter time, as they continue to grow in the warm greenhouse, uh, we'll start to get that back on them. And then over here, I've got my banana area. I've dug up uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got about nine bananas over here. And what I do is I just throw them in the soil and uh, every little bit I'll give them some uh, water, you know, throughout the winter time. And these things will continue to grow. Last year I had them hitting the very peak top of the roof uh, before it was time to bring them in. And you can see you'll, you'll lose a couple of these things. I need to cut this thing off here, but it'll be fine. Uh, it will keep on growing. And I've got more petunias hanging up. I've got a pink china down here in the corner. Next year, I think I'm going to put it in the ground and then just mulch it real heavy. Uh, I understand that they will come back every year. And so that'll give me some more space in the greenhouse. And over here, I've got my Heliconia rostratas growing. These are the lobster claw plants. And let me tell you something, uh, the rhizomes love to grow and expand. Uh, Kiwi Kate and I had one heck of a time getting them out of the old pots and putting them into these new ones. I think in the future I'm going to get uh, plastic uh, plastic pots for these uh, big plastic pots because boy I tell you what those things like to grow and they will expand and you'll have a hard time getting them out of clay pots for sure. I've got an orange bird of paradise in hiding there and I've got another one hiding back here. Right here, hidden in the hosiery, is uh, a seed pod for my plumeria. Um, I've actually got a huge seed pod. If you'll wrap it in hosiery, it's going to go on for about eight to nine months, and then it's just going to pop open and explode. If you put the hosiery around it, when it does that, you'll actually get all of your seeds, and you won't lose them to the wind. Looking forward to that. Welcome to my foyer. <laughs> I've got some grow lights going uh, in the living room area. And check this out. I've got a wall of green in a green foyer. The previous owners, uh, they painted the house uh, green. Now what I'm doing in my foyer area, of course I've got a doorway with lots of lighting there. Uh, I've rigged up something and Miss Katie's okay with it. So uh, I've got lights coming down. Uh, I just put some deals in the ceiling with uh, hangers and uh, that way I can get plenty of light on the subject. This is what we're passionate about, so it's important to us. Now let me show you how thick the base of a Majesty Palm can get after three years. You know what they look like in the stores when you go through Lowe's and all of that, but look at this. This is a Majesty. Yeah, got a little leaf happening there too. Um, quite amazing though. <laughs> and quite big. They like it when you pot them up. If you give them more room to grow, they're going to grow. Okay, let's dig into the jungle here and see what all we've got. We repotted our uh, Monstera Deliciosa and actually put a, a burlap uh, post on the back of it so it can crawl up it. Got some ginger growing in the pots here. I've got parlor palms in the tiki heads. I've got all kinds of stuff going. Lucky bamboo growing. The ponytail palm is over here on the tiki head as well. More cordelins going. I got little dicky over there in the corner there. The anthurium. I've got another ginger in a smaller pot. I need to get potted up so that it can uh, get get as big as the other other one that I've got. Got some uh, burrow's tail going there, donkey tail. 
And I do still have a jabea growing in a cup that's getting ready to go outside. And I got a couple of windmills. Don't really need them inside, but uh, they've been on the patio, so I just brought them in for a little extra greenery in the grow tent area here. I planted a double one here, and you can actually see windmills. One of the things that makes them cold hardy is the sweater that they grow. These two are actually starting to grow their sweaters now. A uh, little bitty, but it sure is cool to see it happening and putting on new spears. And then there's the baby jubea right now, very tender. I've had very good success with uh, my jubea seeds from uh, rarepalmseeds.com. They're not paying me uh, to say that, but they have been good. I would say um, as far as germination goes, I've probably had 65%, 70% germination. Now, not all of those that germinated are going to make it, and they've got hurdles all along the way that they've got to overcome, but doing very good there. And I've got three more majesties in our dining room area. Uh, I've got uh, plenty of windows here. Uh, once again, these are majesties that I've had for several years, and uh, they just continue to grow. My other jabea seeds and where they're at right now. You can definitely tell which ones are older. I've got one there with one, two, three. I've got four leaf straps on one of them. Doing pretty good. I'm probably going to go ahead and take these into the greenhouse and find a place for them since they're in cups. We've had one night of 32. They're doing okay. But in zone 7B, I don't think I want to leave them outside in these cups this season. I'm probably going to put them in the ground next spring and just have a row of jabeas growing. That way they can really get with it. Now, they don't get with it fast. Uh, these are the slow-growing. They're 200-year palms, you know. Um, takes about a lifetime to get uh, a nice, mature size. Here in about 10 to 15 years, though, they'll be big enough to make quite a bit of money on and, uh, and give us a way to retire. And as far as my windmill palm nursery goes, uh, you can see here I've got a lot of those seedlings potted up now into one-gallon pots. I've probably got about 500 or so to go. And on the warm days, I'll get out here and get those potted up. Uh, that's going to give those roots more protection, uh, give them more uh, soil and mulch, um, keep the freezing at bay. There is a couple of things that I'm doing to help because uh, we've already had a freeze warning on one morning uh, a couple of days ago. Let me show you. This is my rescue windmill here that I rescued earlier in the year. I've got burlap down for it. I've got the lights with the thermal cube, and those things are coming on right on time, or right on temperature, I should say. Uh, got down to 35 the other night, and boom, they came on. But I've also run them across the outside perimeter of where these things are. I've got all of these up against the south side of the greenhouse, because the greenhouse is heated. It's going to radiate some heat out. And you can see I've got more. Oh, hello. <laughs> there's my shadow and so I've got the Christmas lights uh, going around the perimeter now LED lights won't help you you need the incandescent lights that have regular bulbs because they actually heat up the other thing I'm doing is I have got frost blanket out here and so uh, if we're gonna have a real freeze I throw it over everything and then uh, at the right temperature they come on and they help hold the heat in and as you can see uh, they made it, uh, normally if you've got plants in cups, the cups are going to, if the cups freeze, you're done. And that's still true. But if you can keep them from freezing with a little bit of, uh, you know, Christmas light heat, a little bit of frost blanket, uh, they'll be fine. Uh, I just need to buy some time until I can get these into the bigger pots. Eventually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Banana Joe's method. Um, Banana, Banana Joe SSI, I think is... Uh, uh, his deal um, on YouTube he's got uh, he uses Lexan panels uh, I'm gonna make some pillars and then I'm gonna lay Lexan panels along it and I do have some leaves I just got to go get up I got them out here on the uh, yard grab those leaves and then uh, I'll insulate with that as well but uh, that's my plan here but man I got a bunch of potting up to do Guys, I apologize in advance for the traffic out on the roadway there, but I got to brag on this palm just a little bit. This was a baby palm uh, at the beginning of last year uh, in a couple gallon pot. I put it in the ground 
And I know a lot of people say, oh, you don't have to put lights on, you know, at 32 degrees. You don't have to do a lot of protection stuff. And that's true. Um, windmill palms, once they're established in the ground, you're good to about five degrees. However, I have a theory, and I think this one is proving it out. If you put the burlap around it, if you put the Christmas lights on, you hook it up to the thermal cube, and you keep that root zone from freezing, what you're going to actually do is you're going to make it healthier. Uh, it's not going to be enduring as many freezes. The roots are going to be able to continue to, to go down to, uh, to find water, especially when the water shuts off in the wintertime. And what you're going to have is a stronger, healthier plant, I believe. Uh, this one is kind of bearing it out. This thing was probably that big around when I planted it uh, at the beginning of last year. And I want you to look, take a look here at the thickness of this trunk. It's putting on really good trunk now. And it's just really growing, growing well. So um, I think it's a good idea to get your winter protection on early. Uh, it's not gonna hurt it at all. And that way also, as an added bonus, you know, when it does get cold, you're not running around like a madman trying to get everything done. Uh, it's already done and ready to go. Uh, the only thing I have to do, if we have a super bad, like freezing rain going down to 10 degrees or whatever, is grab the barrels and pop them on. And yes, I do have my uh, protection barrels ready to go. I've got two here. I've got another one in the garage uh, for the, uh, the rescue palm that I showed you earlier. What I'm gonna do this year instead of using tent stakes is I've got some of those, oh, hang on, let me show you. So I've got a couple of these bad boys here designed for tents. And I'm gonna screw these in the ground on both sides of the barrel and then use ratchet straps just to hold it down. And that should work just fine. Now for my Pendo Palm and my Washingtonia Robusta, they're not quite as cold hardy as the windmill palm. I've got a different plan. I went down to the candy store, also known as Lowe's, and I got some insulation board and some duct tape. A buddy of mine named Austin in Little Rock, uh, you can follow his channel on Rock City, um, sent me some pictures of how he protects his. And basically all he does, I was thinking about having to build a, like a wooden frame and then slap these things on there, and you can do that but he really keeps it simple. He uses the same uh, ratchet strap type method um, and he just uses uh, duct tape. Welcome to my garden and tiki bar building staging area. It used to be known as my garage. Don't judge me people. <laughs> this is the, uh, the other uh, palm protection barrel that I've got here ready to go. But what I've got is this stuff right here. It's uh, about three quarters of an inch thick. It's foam insulation board. It's a nice blue color. And just to keep the neighbors happy, because I'm sure they're going to be really happy with this, I got some matching duct tape. And all you got to do is cut this stuff down to the size that you need once you get your fronds uh, wrapped up. And then uh, you can duct tape the corners, build a little top section for it to put on top. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use those uh, screw in the ground deals with the ratchet straps keep this ratcheted down. I'll probably do a video on it. I don't know how interesting it is. If you'd like to see me build that, how I'm going to do it, uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Uh, I may do that. I've also got some emergency blanket. And what I'm going to do with this is as I build this, I'm going to slap the emergency blanket, tape it to the inside of it so that it's reflective. And then uh, when the lights come on in the thermal cube, uh, it'll bounce the light right back onto the plant. So that's the plan for that. God, let me see if I can get out of here now. I need a truck. Well, guys, that's the nickel tour of the garden, the greenhouse, and the, and the indoor growing. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you wouldn't mind leaving me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Uh, thumbs up helps too and subscribes. Uh, you got to feed the YouTube algorithm this, these days. That's all there is to it. If you don't, you kind of wither on the vine. So it really does help us when you do that. Uh, I'll have links down below to the stuff that we use uh, if you're interested. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. Stay tuned and do subscribe because next up I'm going to do the uh, video on how to start plumerias from cuttings. Got a little shop that I order them from off of Amazon from Hawaii. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, I actually got some in just a few days ago. And so we're going to get those potted up. I'm going to show you the soil to use, the container to use, everything that you need to get them to go from little bitty sticks to great big plants uh, in the space of a year. So stay tuned for that. And thank you once again for watching. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time.